My gosh, how warm is that water? That's crazy. We're on Crab Orchard today, folks. We're gonna have some fun. About 10 o'clock in the morning. The heat's gonna get up there, so uh, we're gonna find these fish on these piles and get off this lake quickly, but I'm gonna show you some of the tactics I use for summer fishing, and we're gonna have some fun today. Middle of the day, sun is out already. Let's put some crappie in the boat, shall we? That was easy. The water is super warm. Gosh dang. I could just swim right here. Huh? All right, folks. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Check out those Ozark rods, those three pound elite series. They are awesome. You guys are going to freaking love them. Go to ozarkrod.com for that. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We're going to have a lot of fun here in this episode at Crab Orchard. We're going to be going through some of the summer thing, crappie things I do to find them and we're back on my one of my home lakes, Crab Orchard, having a ball, and it is hot, 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 hot. So thanks again for watching. Let's do this. Man, is it still today. Not very much wind at all. The heat's going to get up. It's a perfect summer day to try to find these big fish on these piles on Crab Orchard. Uh, we're going to go to some piles in the middle of the lake, see what we can find. All jigs today, jinkle fishing. Give them a give them a try. I'm telling you what, they're awesome baits. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put some summer crappie fishing tactics to good use today, and that's gonna be the focus right now. We're gonna talk about what we're doing. And so, right, I'm gonna start off right off the bat and just tell you, I'm gonna go to the piles that that I know are at different depths and see what's happening. I'm, I'm guessing we're gonna be as deep as crab orchard allows us, which isn't very deep. Now this water is very dingy, so when I've got really dingy water, I will definitely go to brighter colors. You know, you start to get to know a lot of these lakes and what color works the best. And typically on a dingy water lake, orange, chartreuse, bright, um, those are the colors I'm going to go with. But just because I have this particular bait on the rod right now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and use it. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see the live scope screen there, but perhaps we're going to probably won't show up that well, but we're going to try. So right off the bat, folks, when I uh, start off, I uh, I'm uh, scanning out the 45 as the pile comes into view. I am gonna have to adjust my depth because we are in a shallower lake. And so we want to accommodate that. Probably somewhere around that neighborhood. And I can already tell it's getting hot. And once I start seeing a piece of structure coming up, I'm going to zoom in and maximize that screen. And that usually goes to about 20 forward view, 20 foot forward view is where I'm at. So you can mess with the gain a little bit if you'd like. I'll turn it down just a little bit. Well, they like the yellow right now. I can tell you that right now, but they seem to be of the smaller variety. I learned everything I know on Crab Orchard, folks. I was fishing Crab Orchard way before I was fishing Egypt or any of the other lakes. Always give a shout out to my buddy Boone because he truly did help me learn about crappie fishing. I think the best way to learn crappie fishing is to find somebody that's willing to teach you and that makes life a lot easier. And he is just getting a camera down there. That was the biggest fish that was down there, right there. As far as I could tell, for right now. And he ain't very big. And this is probably what Crab Orchard's known for. 
That guy right there, he is about an eight inch or nine incher. Nothing too impressive, I'll tell you. But they have stunted their growth here like you wouldn't believe. I do like the activity of the fish though. The fish are definitely active. One of the best places to start on a, on a lake, any lake for that matter, is uh, when we're seeing a lot of elevation changes. So out here at Crab Orchard, we have quite a few like islands. And usually, if you just stay around the edges of those islands, stay around the edges of those islands, you'll find structure and you'll, stay, you'll see a lot of fish just suspended off those ledges. So that's always a great place to start during the summer. Obviously, we've talked about it before, where going to a new lake that you're not familiar with going to points those are elevation changes those are drops those are subtle drops and a lot of times people a will put structure there or there's natural structure there but also even if there's not those fish will sometimes just be suspended there so they're always a great place to start points and any type of major elevation changes in this case a crab orchard an island All right, that's our first fish of the day right there. That's a good start. That's a solid 12 incher for for crab orchard and nice white, beautiful, beautiful fish. We are letting them go today, of course. So we'll let this guy go. Obviously another summer tactic would be to downsize your baits, whether it's uh, cutting a bait in half, quarter, off of it, but size really does matter in the summer. If you've got a slow bite, downsizing is the number one thing you can do. Um, I go all the way down to a 32nd ounce head. I know some people go down to a 64th. And uh, sometimes I play with small, small hair jigs. Uh, but for the most part, just the idea of downside sizing, slower presentation um, is a really good tactic during the summer. Crappie get really fickle and they don't, uh, they're not chomping at them. So, and, and learning that jig bite is also extremely important. So the more experience you have with jigs, the more you know what a jig bite is. Because uh, they definitely don't always bump or tick. Sometimes it feels like a rub, it just feels like, you know, somebody's pushing your line. and. Uh, it's important to know what those bites feel like with a jig. It is a hot, hot morning. We've been out here a short period of time and I am sweating, sweating. Hey, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I will continue to catch fish in the heat. If I can get more subscribers, for sure. So the three pound fishing rods are available at ozarkrod.com. Available in 10, 11, 12, and 13. Uh, primarily fishing with the 10 and 11 today. This is the 10 footer. Had a lot of fun designing the three pound fishing rods. Uh, figuring out where the stiffness needs to go in the rod was critical in getting the feel that I thought was important. So uh, really enjoying it. It's a fantastic rod. For me personally, it's the best rod I've ever had in my hand, period. Uh, whether it's the 10, 11, 12, or 13, I really like them all equally. But I'm a 10 footer and I've always preached that. I love the fact that I can cast with this guy. I know, I know how it feels to cast, to flip, all that stuff. So we use a lot of these summer techniques that with the 10 footer. I mean, it's my go-to rod length. Right now, I would just like the sun to get behind a cloud. That would be really, really nice. So right now I'm just playing around with the depths. So right now we are a deeper, deeper part of the lake. 
I see a lot of activity. Unfortunately, they look like carp. Really big. All right, great fish there. That's gonna end it for the day. For crab orchard, that's a good fish, 11 and a half -er. Nice white, pretty fish. Thanks for joining, I appreciate it. Please subscribe, share it with your friends. Another great episode on crab orchard, just some of the tactics we use during the summer to find good sized crappie. Thanks for watching another three pound fishing episode sponsored by these great companies.